话。Show you how this all works. First, we start with this guy here. This is the Monom 40H. This here is the driver for the Monom. This patch here converts the signals coming from the 40H to MIDI. So I can press the buttons and you'll see the various lights light up. I can set what note numbers I want. I can also set my input and output ports along with the channel. So I have these going from Max MSP runtime 1 to max MSP runtime 1 and they're both going on channel 16. So these MIDI messages here get sent to live and this is where all the sequencing magic happens. So the first thing you saw me do is I hit this button here. What that does is it turns on arming for that left track. So I turn that on. Now that that's on, when I press these buttons here, specifically I've got a 4x4 grid it's going to send MIDI notes from here into this track in live. Now I've got a track for the left side and a track for the right side. I arm the right side with this button here. And here's where some of the magic happens. It's in these, these guys I've got hidden away. Channels 3 and 4 take the MIDI that's coming into channels 1 and 2 and it sends them out to my IEC driver. That's my internal MIDI bus. And those MIDI commands then go to VDMX, where I've got two media bins you see here filled with clips, and they simply look for those note numbers. So when I press, I have to have arming on. So when I press the buttons, it'll trigger those clips out. These two tracks here, five and six, they also listen to tracks one and two and they send MIDI notes out to the mono. That's how I get the lights to turn on and off. So it sends MIDI 2, max MSP runtime 1, on channel 16. You'll notice that the ones I was sending to VDMX, those go to the IAC on channel 1. So I have these running on different channels so that they don't interfere with each other. So now let's take a look at how we record. 
I've got my left side armed here. Now I can start playing back the first clip in the track. You'll see I get my arrow here, and down here, you see an empty track and the playhead scrolls by. Boom, ba, boom, ba. You can see those little red lights come on boom, when I play them. Ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. The other button I have is overwrite on and off, so I can play around in rehearsal mode boom, boom, ba, just by having this track armed, but when I'm ready to actually record something to one of these tracks here, I turn on overwrite, and now whatever I press, you can see those all get written here into the actual track. Now I can also I can manipulate these in real time. I can change, change the note that was triggered. I can change the timing of things if things need to come just a little sooner or a little later. I can nudge those around here. Uh, so I have stops for both my sides. So this will stop anything playing on track one. And this one here will stop anything playing on track two. So when I want to do something on track two, I just arm that side. We'll get one of these playing. So I can play something on this track here. For each side, we have three tracks. These three buttons here trigger these three tracks. And these three buttons here trigger these three tracks. Now the next bit you saw me do was some audio manipulation. Boom. Now I've got a little something playing on the left hand side. Boom. I have a whole range of audio effects here Boom. I can turn on. Boom. Boom. So the way that these audio effects work, I use something called Soundflower. In my system settings, I've set my output to be Soundflower. Now this is a free program that you can download for the Mac. It serves to route audio internally. So my main output for the computer is the Soundflower. So VDMX here will play these videos and it'll send the sound to this internal sound router. I tell Live to take a look for, to Soundflower for my audio input device. So here I have an audio track that says from VDMX it gets audio from Soundflower and I simply have a number of audio effects that I can turn on and off and I can stack if I like. Now, there is one final trick I use here and that is buttons like this, the overwrite, that doesn't actually send MIDI out like a track or an effect does. So when I wanted to show the toggling on the mono, I had to come up with a little workaround and this is what I figured out. I've got one more track here that is my dummy effects track. If you take a look at it, it's all these, it's MIDI pitch shifting, and they're actually set to shift it all by zero. So this isn't actually doing anything at all. But what it does is I can map buttons on my interface here to these pitch shifting on and off. So you see I have, I have three things mapped here. So now, as long as I start with everything in the same place, my arming is off and these pitch shifters are off. When I turn on the arming, it's actually turning on the arming and this pitch shifting, but the pitch shifting is just dummy. It's not going to use up any of my processor cycles. And it's not going to affect the output, but it is going to allow me to see whether or not I'm recording and whether or not my tracks are armed. And there you have it.